Hi everyone! Today we're going to be looking at a sunflower and I'll be doing a tutorial for you about drawing sunflowers with pen and ink. So this is a request that I've gotten after some of my other floral drawing courses. So this wasn't something I thought I could make an entire class about. Um, so I thought I would just record a quick tutorial for you here. So this is an image here that I got off of Pixabay. So that's a royalty-free image website, so I encourage you to use that for finding reference drawings. And I already have a sketch here, just a quick pencil sketch. I wanted to focus more on um, drawing the textures with the pen, so I wanted to kind of have this beforehand, but a couple tips I guess on doing that is really looking at the proportions of the sunflower. Lots of times the interior is actually really large compared to the petals that come out. This one actually is pretty um, pretty even, but even if you look at how wide is that center versus how big is the petal, you could see the petal is smaller. So look at those proportions when you're sketching it out. So usually what I'll do is I'll draw that circle for the center and then I'll kind of figure out where that circle for the uh, exterior of the petal should be. And you can see here too that there's kind of two different textures on the interior. So the outside is a little bit more wild, <laughs> the inside is a little bit tighter, um, a little bit more structured. So I'll draw that line right there of where those two different kind of interior portions are. And then I have just placed a little dot on where that center is. Um, and then when drawing the petals, just look at where is it coming off of that center. Here's right about at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you know, paying attention to that and kind of what angle is it coming off of. So just a few quick tips on getting, getting this sketch. But I did want to look a little bit more closely here. Let me zoom in on the center of this. So I feel like in not in all images or in all sunflowers can you see this, but you could see here there's a pretty distinct spiral in the center. So that's how I like to draw my sunflowers is really focusing on that spiral. So I'm going to draw the exterior of this, this kind of wild edge like I was talking about. I'll draw that with one type of texture, but when I get to this inside here, look at this. You could see these spiraling lines starting in the center and kind of spiraling out. So you could actually see them in two directions. So here I'm going, what is this, counterclockwise. But they also go clockwise. So that is kind of the, the foundation that I'm going to give myself in pencil. So let's get started. I'm going to move my reference off to the side here so we could see my sketch. So that's why I wanted this, the center to be here, because I'm going to go from that center and I'm going to start drawing these lines that spiral out from that. And again, I want to kind of be using the natural curve of my wrist. If you've been in my classes or watched any of my tutorials before, that's something that I try to emphasize. I think too many times we see a video, of somebody drawing on YouTube or on Instagram or TikTok, and they are not moving their paper at all. So I encourage you to move your paper and use that natural motion of your wrist to get that spiral. So you could see doing the spiral in one direction here first. And then once I get all the way through with this, I'm going to do the spiral in the other direction. So I'm not exactly worrying about like how, how much space is, how many, how many different little, um, little sections am I going to be left with here? It ends up kind of making a triangle like you'll see here in a second, but I'm, I'm just giving myself something that seems reasonable, um, a reasonable amount of detail to me. Okay, so I got the spiral going 
in the clockwise direction. So now I need to do the let's do the counterclockwise direction. So so you start going this way. Um, like I was saying, like I, I'm not worrying too much about how kind of big you can see kind of makes this diamond shape here. I'm not worrying really about how big that is as compared to my reference drawing. I'm just making something that seemed reasonable to me. And I'll kind of show you once I get in here with the pen how I ink this in. So I'm drawing here with a 2B pencil. I would encourage you to use maybe like an HB or something that doesn't leave quite as dark of a line. Um, I'm just doing it with this darker pencil so I can show you this. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to see any of these lines. I know it's still probably a little light for you to see here. Um, once we get going here, I will zoom in a little bit and hopefully then you can see a little bit better. Okay, let's just draw one more. Okay, so I have spirals now in two directions. So you can see that it leaves kind of like these little diamond shapes. So I have two different textures here. I have that structured spiraled center and then I have kind of a crazy exterior. So. I'm going to move now to the pen. So I like to draw generally with um, a zero two for kind of outlines and a little bit more coarse values. Sometimes when I get to detail lines, um, I will go to my zero zero five. So I'm going to be starting with the zero two. And if you've watched my um, pen and ink basics video that I have here on YouTube, you'll see couple different what I call basic strokes of of drawing. So this one that we're going to be focusing on for this exterior here is is finally some use for that scribble that I talked about. So I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit here and let me focus. Okay. So you can see finally a use for that scribble. So I'm going to start uh, getting some of these scribbling lines in there. Another thing you might want to pay attention to here too is which direction the light is coming from. So you can kind of analyze that by looking at the shadows. You could see a shadow here that's being cast by this fold right there. So there's another one kind of right there that's being cast from that. So our light, I would say, is coming kind of from this direction up here. So what that tells me is that your light is going to be hitting kind of on this side. So this is kind of like a little hump here. So maybe I have a little bit more shadow right here. Once I get to the interior, your light is going to be hitting on this side, but I would have more shadow on that side. So I'm just going to take that information and that kind of tells me how dense should I be making my, my scribble lines. So a little less dense here, a little more dense. Maybe by the time I get down to this area in here, and kind of same here, maybe a little less dense. So my light's hitting it there, but not as much light is getting on this side. So with all those thoughts in mind, I'm going to um, continue drawing just this outside part here. opportunity to, to 
kind of work in layers. So you could kind of see I have a base layer here of those scribble lines, but now I kind of want to go back in and emphasize a little bit of where those light and dark areas would be. So again, thinking about the light coming up from this direction. So I'm going to have some shadow here, shadow back here. And you could even see in here, like some of these areas just get kind of dense and you don't get much light in there. So you could see even here, like I kind of started adding a little bit of shadow just, just to give that all a little bit of depth. So with that in mind, go back through, really think about where that light is coming from. Cause really any type of drawing, I kind of <laughs> am pretty set with my, my thought at this point that it, it's the light and shadow that's really going to make your drawings look realistic, um, look believable, because your your eyes just used to seeing that light and shadow and it, it understands it, even though now I need to kind of think about it as I'm drawing it. Um, that's it's what it's expecting to see. So we are going to go through and add some of those dark areas now. good with my light and shadow now. I'm I'm going through. It, it looked a little too structured to me on the the outside, so I'm going through and just adding a few little ones like they are they were just trying to get away on the outside there. So add a few, make it look a little bit more wild, and then we'll move on to the interior. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do with this is actually just go over those pencil lines that I already made with my pen. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with my zero two here. So you could see this is the eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, and I drew the sunflower really big. So if you drew it smaller, you might want to move to a smaller pen. But I'm gonna keep going with my zero two. So just go ahead and kind of go over those lines. If I didn't get my pencil line all the way out to now where I have that other texture of the exterior, I might just extend it a little bit. But go ahead and make your spirals and we will meet back when you're all done with that. So now we have our spirals in there. You can see now we have pretty defined kind of triangle shapes, or that's more of a diamond shape, I guess. So um, you can see it gets really dense in the middle here just because how our lines are converging. We already kind of have that density just with these lines. But when I go in and add some more detail lines, I'm going to focus on, on making that pretty dark in the middle. And then as those little diamond shapes get bigger on the outside, that's when more light is hitting them and they're not going to be as dark. So I'm going to now change from my 02 pen to my 005. I'm going to start with that middle. I mean, it's just easy to, to think about maybe making this a little bit darker in the middle here. Um, and I'm just kind of adding just a simple hatch line it's making my, my middle diamond shapes dark, almost filling them in. For the next step, since this interior is so dark, I'm not really worried quite yet about where light's coming from, but we will talk about that next because that's going to determine kind of how we shade the, a little bit those bigger shapes. And sometimes too, like I could see this line, like it makes sense for me to like make another diamond within that. These little details probably don't matter a whole heck of a lot when you get to this middle. But I'm just going to kind of fill these in until we start getting to some of those bigger shapes. 
And again, please move your paper however you need to to make this easier for you. Okay. So you can see here, again, we, we were thinking our light's coming this direction. So just the way that these are sticking up, you kind of can see which shade or which side has shade. So in this diamond pattern down here, it seems like this side is a little bit darker. So I mean, I'm just going to take little cues from, from this kind of looking at where the dark portions are in these kind of diamond shapes and add some shading lines. So I think which direction you do this, or like which, which side the, the shading lines are on, doesn't really matter as much, but each one of these little diamond shapes are going to get a, at least a couple little shading lines and I think that'll really start to give it a little bit of dimension especially when you start making some areas like that that are a little darker and again you can see my diamond shapes here are much bigger than those but I think that's that's fine if you wanted to make your spirals draw more of those spiral lines and make it even tighter if you are really trying to go for you know, ultra realistic look I encourage you to do that still just the same strategy just end up drawing more of those draw them spaced together a little bit more and you will get more of these diamond shapes but for this drawing and especially for this tutorial so it doesn't take me forever to sit here and draw all of it I kept mine a little bit bigger so you could see what I'm doing you could see like some of these areas that I made really dark are is really popping out and I like that a lot so I'm actually gonna go back again you can always work in layers I'm gonna go back in here and add a few more lines to kind of make some of those really dark areas. And you know too that that interior got a little is, is quite dark compared to when you get to that exterior so I might even add a few lines going the other direction. Okay so this is pretty much just the strategy, kind of looking at where the the dark and the light is. So I'm just going to keep going here and kind of give each of these little diamond shapes a few little shading lines to kind of give it some depth. starts to give those diamond shapes a little bit of dimension makes them look a little bit three-dimensional so I'm just going in now and finding some little areas here and there that I think would benefit from a little bit more shadow so again if if our light is coming from this direction up here I'm gonna get a lot of light here start to get some shadow here um, this kind of outer area here will probably cast a little bit of shadow right there. So I'm going to kind of go in here and make this area a little bit darker, at least right along that edge. Okay. 
make sure my center is pretty dark again if you look at, at this in here. That center area is pretty dark, so just kind of taking some cues. I'm not really trying to match exactly the the reference image, but just taking cues um, as to where some light and shadow may be. It looks to me here that this area down here is a little darker, so I'm just going through and adding a few more of those hatch lines. And you can't take any of these lines away, but you can always add. So I usually do try to keep it a little lighter to begin with, and then I go back and add some more later. So that's what I'm doing here. And for the most part, I think that looks pretty good. Um, really all I'm trying to do is trying to give some definition to those shapes to make them look a little three-dimensional. You can see here they look like it's like little nubs that kind of stick out. So, so just adding a little bit of light and shadow kind of to those tips of the diamond kind of makes that center area stick out a little bit more. So pretty much then that completes the center. That's how I draw those. And for the petals on the exterior, I'll go back to my zero two. I like to use that to outline. So I already have my pencil drawing in here. And if you look at petal shape here, um, they come to kind of a tip, but it's not like super pointy. So, and then it usually almost kind of splits. So I just kind of look at those details and you can kind of refine a little bit as you're drawing all your petals in here. So I'm just going to go over all of my pencil lines here and draw these petals. petals drawn I can see each petal kind of has one or two like creases in it which I drew some of those with that pencil but while I still have this thicker pen since those are a little bit more prominent I'm gonna go through and draw some of those in here too and then we'll talk about how I do the shading for these or at least just the very basics of it this isn't really purpose of this video, but I thought I might as well finish drawing off this flower here. So go ahead and kind of look at where those major creases are and draw in the lines using your little bit thicker pen at this point. that's pretty good and then I switch to my 005 so again looking at which direction the light is coming from from this top right and you can kind of see the areas um, that end up in shadow so petals that are behind other ones um, some of them almost cast shadows onto themselves when you have like a little fold like that so um, and actually when it gets kind of towards the base here because you can see all of the petals kind of like curl in a little bit on themselves. So we're going to focus shadow on those areas and these petals are pretty flat. So I, I really um, just think about drawing lines that follow the contour of the petal and these petals are pretty straight. So I'm going to focus more on the base the base of each petal where it connects here. I'm thinking about how it each petal kind of starts 
starts from that center and goes out. Focusing more of those shadows. I'm going to be looking too at my, my reference here and looking at where shadows occur. So this little fold here actually casts quite a bit of a shadow onto that petal. So you could see those are the things that I'm going to be focusing on. So I'm just going to go through and keep referencing back to my image here, looking at where the light is coming from, really emphasize any curls of the petal. I might even add like a few more lines like that, kind of to where those major folds were. And you could see here too, if I add a little bit of dark in this area, that makes that fold really stand out a little bit more. So those are the things I'm going to be looking at. This is something that I talk in depth about in my rose drawing course. So it's one that I have offered it a few times this year already. I'm not sure if I'm going to be offering it again this year, but I'm kind of transitioning all my videos to something pre-recorded. So that might be something that I may be doing here soon. And then you'll have the opportunity to really go in depth with me on those. So, so go through and draw those shadows and really pay attention to what is cast in the shadow and keeping your lines going in the direction of each petal. that looks pretty good and that is going to be it for today so really for the sunflower what you want to focus on is the different textures on that interior making that spiral pattern will help a lot um, and then just adding that shading to the petals according to which direction the light is coming from so you can see here if I can get both of them in the screen that's my sunflower for today so if you found this helpful, please like the video, um, subscribe if you want to know when new videos are coming out. And if you have any tutorial requests, um, specifically for pen and ink drawing is kind of what I specialize in. So if you have any requests for that, please leave them in the comments. Thank you.